morning. How are you doing? Well, it's morning where I'm at, wherever you are in the world, what time it is. My name is Bobby. Welcome to my channel. I think I already said that. I haven't had my coffee. It's late, but I haven't had my coffee. And I am the emperor of the universe without coffee. I'm not caffeinated right now, but uh, apparently powers that be wanted me to say something. And this video is going to be about ancestral curses. Which pretty much ties into childhood trauma and all the other stuff. So it's kind of like that. It's like the essence of the, the traumatic, post-traumatic stress disorder that most people suffer from when they deal with these kind of things as a child. And what brought it up was Sonny. I had lunch with Sonny. He called me up and wanted to know if I wanted to have lunch with him. He'd buy it for me. And he's very generous. I said, no problem. He went, he actually, his brother sent him some money and as he, and he went to, had dinner last night and he played, he gambled $3 on a machine and won a hundred bucks. So he's like, he won, you know, so he thought he'd buy me breakfast. Very generous of him. This is the thing. Sonny was telling me about numbers that he sees on trees and how he turns clouds and how he sees numbers on everybody's foreheads. And he used to think that, and there used to be a letter next to the numbers and it would be B or G or X next to the number. And he said he thought the, the G and the B were for boy and girl. Then he realized it was for good and bad. And the X is for the real, the, the real naughty ones. The, bad, the ones that aren't retrievable, apparently. They're just really just, they're just either evil. They're just either demonic spirits themselves or whatever. But this is what Sonny believes. This is what he sees. And he's, a, and I, and a, he's suffering. Remember, he has a tumor in his head. And he's suffering. He has migraines and he doesn't want to use medical marijuana because he doesn't want to think when he tells people these things that they're going to think he's crazy or on drugs. I'm sorry. So, you know, he he doesn't want to, he, he's trying, he's, he's suffering needlessly because he doesn't want people to think he's, he's on drugs when he tells them these things. He wants to be perfectly sober. And I've sat and had, I've had conversations with Sonny and this conversation we had, we had brunch was amazing. And we talked about childhood traumas and I tell him about my breakthrough with my father and how I was trained to be a slave and not a conqueror. And he understood exactly what I was talking about. And he goes, yeah, my dad used to beat the shit out of me every day. And then I grabbed my sons once and around their neck. And he said this, and he goes, and I didn't hit him, but I, was, I realized what I was doing and I stopped. But they still remember, he goes, they still remember that, that one incident. And he tells them, did I ever, did I sit you on fire? Did I punch you afterwards? I didn't think they're like, no, he's all, well, then there you go. Because <laughs> that's what happened to him, right? So he'd been through it. And God touched this gentleman in a very interesting way. And he, he just doesn't want to think people will believe him. And like I said, I've sat there and talked with him. So he's not crazy. And not at all. He's very unique. And he's a big dude. And that's the thing is he's like, he used to be a really badass. He used to do, you know, you usually when you're big, you go two ways. You either become the protector and you're really eating like gentle giant or you're the terror. You know, you're the one nobody wants to piss off because you'll just beat the crap out of them. Even if they're half your size, that kind of bully. But and he goes, you know, it's one of those things. He's 60, right? And he's he's went through the dark night. He said he was like for seven months. He was there at the at the beach in Newport at Nye Beach sleeping next to a building for seven months. And people were just loving to him people give him food give him money he'd never felt that kind of love before apparently who knows maybe that's I mean, that's it right and so he stayed he when i talked to him when i met him he was still just recovering but he was living in his vehicle and i was doing what i can for him you know i mean i love him and we were talking about how he was from Corvallis or he lived in Corvallis and he was just like, I want to be out here. I love this place. I love these people. I love the, you know what I mean? He was like, I don't want to go back. I want to be out here. And I'm like, cool. Then be out. I said, then be out here, man. Fuck it. Then do what you got to do. Right. You know? And when I left, I was concerned that I wouldn't see him again. When I left last summer, last fall, when I went down to the desert for the winter and I, I thought about him and I was like, I hope he's still around. Right. And then, of course, three days after I show up here, I'm sitting here in this spot in the storm. And I go, first first 10 minutes I'm at Nye Beach, he shows up. And we had no contact for, what, six months? So, yeah, this is there's some divine connections going on here in the world. 
<clears throat> he's one of them. Another gentleman that I sold the painting to last weekend that was just taking photographs and, I, and took me out to dinner. We had a great conversation. His wife loves the painting. He was going to give it to his granddaughter, but he's, his wife fell in love with it. So now I said, don't worry, I have some other ones that she might like. So he's going to come next weekend and he called me and wanted to know if I would hang out. You know what I mean? It's like, okay. He's a really nice guy. I think he was just really enjoyed our conversation. And I had a great conversation with the lady yesterday, Linda, about homeless people and, you know, and how it hurts your heart and how grace always wins. And she was almost choked up talking about that. The meaning of it. And I was like, grace. And I was thinking, that's what it is. That's how you break those ancestral curses. Is in the deep darkness. You know? Ah. Yeah. Be still. Yet. Cling to that thread of hope that that's grace. And you can hang on to the light. No more showing me about it. It's that powerful. Whew. And that's what it is. It's grace. Yeah, it's peace in your heart, knowing you're doing right, you're trying to do right. Like I said, we're learning. It teaches you learn, right? And give as you go, those kind of things. I didn't expect this to get so heavy. But this is a good heavy. People, yeah, carry. Because there's a lot of evil fuckers in this world, and you've seen it on television. Just watch. They want to start wars. They want to kill each other. They do. They're, they don't want peace. They don't want talks. They don't want negotiations. They don't want treaties. They want terror. They want fear. And they're in charge. They're pushing the buttons, man. So I'm going to do what I can to find people that love. I'm finding some amazing people. <clears throat> and it's powerful, baby. It's powerful. And I didn't, I, I'm not a people person. I'm telling you. God, I'm like, why would you pick me? I enjoy the desert. I enjoy being alone. I enjoy going a month without speaking to another human being. And it's not a problem, baby. It's not. But I love people. It doesn't mean I don't want to get married and have a relationship and figure that out, too. But right now, I'm just I'm just saying, you know, why pick me? Because he knows how I feel about being around other humans. And how, but he's sending me some really amazing humans to, to interact with. And hopefully that's the case. No one wants to be fooled. And everybody's looking for truth when they talk to people. And it's hard to find nowadays. So, whew, live in grace, baby. That's all you got. Because I believe in it, and I believe in you. And, yeah. If this video touches you, then damn, you got it, baby. You got the grace. I'm getting all chimp camp and OJ. If you're still watching this, you're amazing. I love you, and I'm just rambling at this point. I love you. God loves you, and the, the universe is an amazing place. And it's full of grace. And let it touch you, and touch others. And, you know what I mean? Speak kind words to others. Show others you care. Give warm blankets. Warm, clean blankets, food, hugs if you can. Some, some homeless are pretty smelly. You gotta be careful. But still, they need baths. Whew, do we can, people. And we'll win. Good always does. It's just a struggle, right? That's why they call it passion. Anyway, I love you. I'm passionate about you. So, have a wonderful day.